In this video segment, I'm going to go through the process of creating a remodel project for a master wing. Specifically, the client has requested a new coat closet to merge the existing bath and closet together for a larger closet. And then the final thing is to create a new addition for a large, approximately 12 foot by 18 foot spa bath, large shower, separate water closet, two vanities, couple of large corner windows and a high shed ceiling. As I toggle on the reference display to the final completed plan in 2D, you can see off to the right hand side where the new addition will go and then the orange dash lines inside will show new representations of the coat closet and the separate water closet. Let's take a 3D view and explore what we're going to look at. In this overhead view, you can see the current master wing, and I actually have the ability to superimpose the completed project with a tool called the 3D Reference Display. You can toggle that on with your keyboard by pressing F9 on the keyboard, and now you can see this 3D Reference Display. I'll talk a little bit about how to do that, but basically if you were to double click on the floor indicator, this opens up the reference display and you can see down below here I've used the completed file. This is an external file of the completed project, which layer set and what rendering technique is being displayed. And I can now superimpose that. And again, a shortcut to that is F9 on the keyboard. So you can see and you can help your client see exactly the way the project is going to look when you toggle this view on. Same thing works in the 2D view. If I toggle this on again with F9 on the keyboard, you can see it. You access it the exact same way. You click on the floor indicator. Again, you can see that I've reached out to this plan file, what the reference file is, and I've set up a layer set for footprint so it shows the walls in orange. So this may help you perhaps with your client permitting, if you need to show the as-built walls and the remodel walls to do it. Let's go into the project and let's get started with creating the requirements for the remodel. Let's start with the remodel project. Let's go ahead and add the walls for the bath and then we'll do some demo work in the project. Now as I get started, I'm going to press F9 on my keyboard, which is a shortcut to turn off that external reference display to the completed one. And I'm going to begin the process by using the exterior wall tool. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to approximately create the shape of the new bathroom. I have my temporary dimensions being displayed. When you click on one of these objects, in this case the wall, you'll see the temporary dimensions display. I'm going to click on this. I'm going to enter in 12 feet, position that wall, and then I'm going to also click on this one and enter in 18 feet. I'm going to click in this new room area, double click to open it up, and I'm going to name this to be a master bath. On the general panel, you'll find a drop down of available room names. I'm going to come down and name it a master bath. And as long as I'm in here, I'm going to come over to the moldings panel and I'm going to remove the molding out of this bathroom. Once we're finished, let's go ahead and take our 3D overview. And now in the 3D view, you can see the new space for the bathroom. And now I'm going to do a little bit of demo work. And I can do this in the 2D view or in the 3D view. And I'm just going to click on these different objects and then press the delete key to simply remove them. So we'll just kind of click on these items, rotate our view, hold my shift key down, delete these items. And for this new area over the siding, I need to remove and strip that siding off. My default wall type is an exterior wall for that. I'm going to go ahead and notch this out because this original wall spanned the entire length through here. So what I want to do is I'm going to use the break tool. I'm going to put a notch at this intersection and a notch in this intersection. You'll find that break tool up in your edit toolbar. It's called break wall. Go ahead and select that tool and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click in this intersection. Come over here and click in this intersection. That's created a new wall segment that I can now click on. And if I double click on it, 
that will open up the wall types or the wall specification in the wall types panel. I'm going to change that. Again, basically you can think in the field you're going to be stripping off that six inch stud wall the siding. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select an interior six wall. You see in the preview. Now you see the new wall type. It's been stripped of the siding. Let's go back over into the 2D view and make a few additional changes and add our walls back in this area where the new closet for the coat closet is going to be and the larger overall closet. Now in the 2D view you can see that we still have the room type which controls your flooring and other things. You can also do schedules by room type. I'm going to actually click in this room double click on it to open it up and I'm going to change that from a bathroom to the new closet. Choose that from the drop down list. You can always rename it if you have a slightly different name you want to give it. You can always give it a specific name if it's not in the drop down. We'll name that a closet and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend this wall. Let me toggle off my temporary dimensions. I'm just going to pull that down a little ways. Pull it over to this area. This is going to form the new coat closet that was a requirement right up here to create a coat closet. And now I'm going to go ahead and place the doors and the windows to complete those openings. For the water closet, I'm going to place a couple of interior four walls right in this area. We'll come back over into our wall menu. I'm going to choose the interior wall tool. My default that I have set up is using an interior four tool. Go ahead and come over here and create that shape. Click on the wall and I'm going to set that in this case to be 3 foot 10. It should give me about 36 inches interior dimensions. And then for this wall right here, go ahead and click and I'm going to put in 6 foot 4.5. And you'll notice since I clicked on a parallel dimension to the wall, it's asking which way would you like to move that in this case and I'm going to click on the up arrow so we can position that and move that segment. So that should finish creating the shapes. Notice that it still says closet. Let's click inside of this room and I'm going to open it up and I'm going to change it to a master bath. And then again I don't want it to display master bath. I'm going to just come over here and I'm going to type in WC for water closet. I should wrap up most of the new walls and now let's go ahead and place some doors. I see an existing door. We're going to remove that. We'll add that entry from the bathroom. Let's begin by using this door since it's already positioned in the right location. I'm going to use the copy tool in my lower edit menu and I'm going to reflect about the center of the room. Place that door. You can easily grab these handles and position the swing as you need to. Let's go ahead and grab a new door and I'm just going to use a simple hinge door. I'm going to place a door in the water closet. I'm going to place a door in this closet. And one of the tricks I like to do is if I hold my left mouse button down and pull it, you can control the swing. Again, when you place these doors, you can move your cursor to either side of the wall and it will place it in that direction. And then if you left click, pull the mouse down, it will control the hinge side. You can always click on a door and control that down here in your edit menu, your lower edit menu, change the hinge side or in this case change the swing side if you want to do it. Now for this bedroom we remove the barn door coming in this direction and for the bathroom I'm going to actually use a pocket door because I don't have enough room to put a barn door since the bed will be positioned in here and that barn door would actually slide into the bed. Let's come into our drop down and we're going to choose the sliding pocket door. And we're just going to come over here and place that approximately in this location. Now I'm not going to worry too much about the dimensions in this case for the video. The next thing I want to do is take the windows. Let's zoom in down in this area right here. I'm going to take this window and I'm just going to slide it over into the water closet. Once it's located here, you can always use the center tool in the lower edit menu. Come over here and pick it up out of the room. And on this window, I'm going to create a couple of copies for it. And 
make a series available in that closet. Let's double click on it and let's see what the dimension is. You'll notice that it's a 30 by 30 hopper window. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the multiple copy tool. You'll find that again in your lower edit menu. Click on that and then I'm going to click on this tool for the interval again in the lower edit menu. And I'm going to set that to be 32 inches. And now as I drag this out, it's going to copy that window every 32 inches. So I'm just going to move my mouse over that move handle. You'll see my cursor change. I'm going to pull it over. And that allows me to create a mold or blocked window. To mold it or block it, I'm just going to draw a marquee around it. I have all three windows selected down here in my edit menu. I'm going to choose the make mold unit. Click. Then I'm going to use the copy button. You can use control C or command C on your keyboard if you're a Mac user. Hit the copy button in the lower edit menu and then I'm going to come over here and just place that in the master bath. Again you can center that in the room by clicking on the window using the center tool, picking up the center of the room and then position it exact. So that takes care of the windows in this area. And the other request, if we zoom out a little bit, was for large corner windows in the new addition for the spa bath. You can see that we have a corner window in this area. And I want to do the same thing over in this area for the master bath. Let's grab our window tool, click and place the first window. Let's double click and set the parameters for that window. So my default window, you can see in the preview, is a single casement for this fixed corner window. I'm going to change it to a fixed glass, and then we'll change the width and the height. So let's set it to be 54 by 72. And you'll notice as I press the tab key with those dimensions, the floor to top or floor to bottom will adjust. And to support these corner windows, I'm going to actually place an I-beam later in the video so it'll support that cantilever. I'm going to put it at 23 and 3 8 inches off the floor, which probably means you're going to need it to be tempered. You'll find that option under your options panel. If you're doing a window schedule, it will show up provided you include that in your columns for your schedule. Now that I've got that corner window kind of positioned, I'm just going to click and drag, keep going, and place it into the corner. I'm going to press Control C on my keyboard for PC users, Command C if you're a Mac user, and then I'm going to paste it using Control V, Command V for Mac users. And then I'm going to slide that again, keep going up, place it in the corner, zoom in, you'll see that there's a little post right there. I want to remove that post so it's seamless. Shift click on both windows, and then we'll go ahead and double click to open them up. And it should be over here on the frame. I'll remove the option for has corner post. You can see in the plan view that updates. And if we toggle back over into the 3D view, you see the corner window and you see the remaining openings that we have that we've added into the design. Now the next item on the checklist for the remodel project in the new edition is to create a high shed ceiling. And if I take a camera view using this full camera and point and click in the direction, Chief Architect automatically creates a flat ceiling when you form a room. And what I want to do is I want to create a sloping ceiling on the low end of the corner windows that slopes up towards the smaller windows. To do that, I'm going to go through and build the roof. Let's take one more camera view with the roof on. And you'll find that camera with the perspective full overview. And you're going to see that we already have an existing roof for the as-built condition, but the project addition that we put on there does not yet have a roof. Let's go through the process in creating the roof. Under the Build menu, come down to Roof and Build Roof. Now there's lots of different styles you can build. You can click on each one of those and it will give you a help file and tell you the process to create those roof styles. Here's what I'm going to do. I've got a default roof pitch for this project at 2 and 12, which is the existing roof pitch you see in the as-built. 
I'm going to click on build roofs. There's also an option for automatic rebuild roofs. As you make changes in the design, the roof will automatically rebuild for you. Since I already have a roof, I don't want to do that. I'm going to actually click retain manually drawn and manually edited roofs. That way it will not remove the existing as built roof. Let's go ahead and build the roof for the project. And you can see the default style here. It puts on a hip roof all the way around. And I want to match the same shed roof. So let's go ahead and click on each one of these walls. Again, I don't have the automatic roof on, so after I click on these walls, make the changes in the wall that will tell the roof how to build, then I'll need to go back and rebuild the roof. Let's click on this outside wall, double click on it to open it up, and what I'm going to do is on the roof panel, I'm going to come down and I'm going to say that it's a full gable wall. There's also a toggle you'll find in your toolbar, change to hip, toggle that on, toggle it to gable, it did the same thing I did. Now the final one is this front wall. Let's open that wall up and I'm going to change that to a high shed gable wall. Now I can go back into the build menu for the roof and when I rebuild the roof, again checking to retain the manually edited roof planes, you're going to notice that it will automatically then Observe those settings. Again, this wall was a gable, the front wall was a shed, high shed, and the roof will then rebuild around those properties. So I'll go ahead and slide this window up a little bit. Maybe hold your control key down. It, since it will override bumping and snapping, there's a perceived ceiling line in there, but we remove that ceiling. And when you go back into the room view, you still see this flat ceiling and when we move those windows around you can see, well, okay, there's the ceiling. So what I need to do in this case, let's click towards the floor and double click on the structure panel. There's a setting in here that says use flat ceiling over this room. Uncheck that and now you can see the effect of creating a shed ceiling pretty quick. Use the roof tool, set the pitch, and then you can generate the ceiling in a very fast way, in this case a sloped or a shed ceiling. Next, back here in this corner of the room, I want to create the shower. I'm going to toggle back over to the panel for the floor plan. And what I want to do is come down into this area right here, and I'm going to use a tool specifically for creating a straight glass pony wall, which is nothing more. Pony wall is two wall types. In this case, my default wall type. If you were to look at this, let's just double click on this tool. I've set my wall type up, as you can see in the preview. The lower wall is tile, upper wall is glass. And that's just a designation that it's pony wall. And you can see that it's glass. And that in this case, I have a wall type called interior four tile with that material on there. In here you have the ability to control the upper and lower heights of those walls and how it displays in the plan view. As long as I'm in here, let's go ahead and set the elevation in the wall to be 36 inches. Press the tab key. You'll see the preview update for those components. Now that that default is kind of set, I'm going to use this wall and I'm just going to come over here and drag out the wall to the approximate distance I want for the shower. Again, you'll notice that I created a room within the master bath. It comes up with the master bath designation. Let's highlight that room, double click to open it up. On the general panel, I'm going to simply use the master bath properties, but I'm going to call it a shower for the floor plan view. Now I'm going to just use the interior dimension here and create an interior dimension. We'll just draw it this way. Go ahead and turn that dimension on and then we'll turn the dimension this way. These are permanent dimensions versus temporary dimensions that we used before. Let's go ahead and zoom in here just a little bit. I'm going to pull that dimension back. Since this is a pony wall, it wants to go to the main layer up above. I'm just going to snap that back to the lower wall. Do the same thing on this wall. Now what I can do is highlight the wall, click on the dimension and enter the number I want. I'm going to go ahead and just type in 57 inches. And then we'll do the same thing on this one. Let's go ahead and click on this wall over here. 
and in this case we'll set it to be 86 inches. You can also enter in the tick sign if you want to put in feet. That's kind of sized the room and what I want to do is just kind of put a break in this wall so that it's open. I'm not going to put a door in there. It's just open so you'll be able to walk down the hallway and then through the shower. So wall is selected. I'm going to use the break tool. You'll find that up here in the menu. Break wall. I'm going to create a break in here. And what I want to do in this case is instead of deleting that, that would actually remove my room definition, I want to retain the room definition. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just toggle that wall to be invisible. There's an invisible tool down here in the lower edit menu. And all that's going to do is toggle that wall to be invisible. And I don't have those being displayed, so it turns the display of that wall off. And let's go back over into our 3D camera. And you can see that it's created this different room type. And by again, by having a room definition, this is an invisible wall, the one you can't see, it's invisible. But having room definition allows me to maybe set different ceiling heights and control things and just different properties about the room. So that's why I left the wall there and toggled it invisible to be able to retain that. Now the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to place the fixtures and then we'll adjust the colors, materials, and then we'll do the framing. So let's go back into the floor plan and I'm going to open up the library. I'm going to browse out and I'm going to find the different components that I want to put into the library for the fixture, the vanities, Notice that one of the requirements is two large vanities. We'll go ahead and place those. What I've done is I've created a shortcut folder under my user catalog of different components. In Chief Architect, there's a core catalog, a bonus catalog, which you download from the 3D library from our website, and manufacturer catalogs. Again, you download those from our 3D library. Then there's a user catalog that you can create and add shortcuts to favorite items. And that way, maybe if you use the same fixture over and over, it's a quick way to find those things. So let's begin by coming down to my user catalog. I've created a bath category. And what I'm going to do is grab one of my vanities. And I'm going to come over here and place this in the view. That comes in as a block. You'll notice that there's already a sink, a faucet, and some towels on it. A lot of times when I place these to get a little more precision for dimensioning, I will just unblock those. So I'll go ahead and click the unblock. And then I'm just going to slide that and bump that across into the wall. And the next thing I'm going to do is just grab an LED mirror. And I'm just going to place that right behind the vanity. Now I want to take and place the exact same thing over against this wall. And one of the little tricks I like to do is I'm just going to use a copy and reflect about. And to do that, I'm going to draw a line that's temporary. And I just used the line tool, came in here and drew a 45 degree line across the windows. And I'm going to use that to copy and reflect about that existing vanity. Let's go ahead and change the layer set. Right now, I've got a layer set on for the floor plan, and you won't see the different views in here for the different towels and accessories inside that vanity. So by turning that plan view onto the interiors, you can actually click on those towels. It's difficult to see underneath the countertop, but they're there. What I'm going to do is just draw a marquee around the vanity and the LED mirror and all the accessories in the vanity. While it's highlighted, I'm going to use the copy tool, copy, and then I'm going to use the reflect about in the lower edit menu, reflect about, and just going to come over here and click reflect about. Those two cabinets are now exactly spaced. I'll go ahead and slide this wall out, give myself a little extra room, bump it against the cabinet. Next, I'm going to go ahead and grab a freestanding tub and filler. We'll come over here, snap onto the line. You see the snap. We'll go ahead and click and place that into the area. May need to slide that out slightly if you want. And then the next thing is in the shower area. Let's go ahead and grab some of our shower component. And what I've done here is I typically might install a shower head, some body sprays, and a grab bar. I blocked all of those together. Go ahead and come over here and place that. And then rotate it into position or slide it into position. Once you have that dimensioned, you may use your dimension tools, get it positioned. I'm going to use the same thing that I did when I copied the vanity. I'm going to grab the line tool. I'm 
going to draw a temporary line out at a 45 degree angle. We'll click on this object for the shower head and body sprays. Use the copy tool, use reflect about, grab the line, and that will position those in the exact dimension. So if you position the first grouping and you want it symmetrical, that might save you a little bit of time. Strip drain, place a few of these objects in here, and we'll slide that into place. We'll just place a strip drain right in here, and then also the valves. We'll place those so they're easily accessible when you first walk into the shower. We'll rotate that around. And then the final thing, let's go ahead and put a bench in there. A lot of times I'll just use a custom countertop. We'll come over here, snap into this area right here. And we want to have a free floating bench. Let's go ahead and double click to open this countertop up. We'll set the thickness to be, let's say, 4 inches, and then the height, floor to top. Let's go ahead and set that at 18 inches. Okay, a few moving parts there. Let's go back into the pre-existing camera that's already open. We'll click on that tab, and then we'll rotate around, and you can see the different components that we put in here. And I'm going to go ahead and make a few changes in this view. We'll probably have to make a few more from the room view, but I'm going to go ahead and grab the material off of the floor. Let's use the room mode for the material painter, and I'm going to spray on the material for that room. Change the materials. You can see that it updates. And then for the shower, let's use a material eyedropper. Let's pick up the material off of the lower shower wall, and we're in room mode still with the material painter. We'll click inside the room, apply that onto the shower. Also, let's apply it onto the shower bench. And for the most part, we've been able to complete the major components and major goals of the project. If we go back to the floor plan view, let's zoom out a little bit. We created a new coat closet. We did that right in this area. We expanded the bath and the previous closet, and we did the addition. And then when you take a look at the 3D view, let's go ahead and close some of these items up. When you go back into the 3D view, you can see all of the elements we've been able to achieve and be able to create the 3D views of this. Well, here's a final rendering that I created for the project. And then if you take a look at my construction drawing here, I've isolated this just to the bathroom. You can see the elevations, the materials that we've selected, and the notes as well. Thanks for watching the video. If you want to watch additional videos on various components, make sure you visit our website. We also have how-to support articles. Thanks for watching and happy remodeling.